Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. It's been a while since we've done a electronics project on Scrap Science and to fix that uh, what we're going to attempt to do is uh, build a computer, a fully working computer, a pretty simple one, a fully working simple computer out of nothing but these transistors. I realize it's a bit of an ambitious project uh, it's going to require thousands of transistors but I think it's doable and might as well start now. So what we're going to build in this possibly very lengthy series uh, we're going to build something very similar to this which is called the X-Toy Machine. Sorry I don't have a screen filmer. So what the, the X-Toy Machine is, I think you can download it off the internet, maybe I'll, I'll put a link in the description, is it's essentially just a really simple computer processor that you can feed uh, instructions in hexadecimal and get it to perform operations and such. So I've set up a program now which will divide two numbers. Ready? I've, I've inputted 24 here in binary. We'll get a bit more into how this all works a bit later on in the series, but if we've inputted 24 down the bottom here, it's in binary, we enter that, we run the rest of the program, then we input uh, 8, so 24 divided by 8 should give us 3, which I'm hoping we should be able to do programs like this uh, with just transistors that we've soldered together on circuit boards. So to start off our journey in building a very large computer processor. Uh, I've been designing some parts for the logic and the memory so far. Uh, it's looking like it's going to take yeah, 10,000 transistors, something like that, but we'll see if we can get it done. We're going to start out by having a look at logic gates. Logic gates are probably the best place to start, uh, seeing as they're the simplest kind of building blocks that you can make with nothing but transistors and uh, you can chain them together in different arrangements to get different functions. So we'll start out by explaining the NOT gate. Uh, actually, no, we won't. We will start out by explaining what a transistor actually does. That'll be a good place to start, I think. So this is the schematic diagram of a transistor. And what it essentially is, is just a really small electronic switch. So what it does is if you pass a current from the base electrode to the emitter electrode then what it does is it really connects the collector down to the emitter as well so current can now flow from the top electrode to the bottom electrode. Uh, what they actually look like is I'll get one out uh, kind of like this so we've got the collector pin up here the base and the emitter so if you apply an electronic signal to the base then if with some additional circuitry up the top, possibly some other transistors that work in a similar way, uh, you can get logical operations, uh, which I'll explain in a bit. So back to the NOT gate. This only uses one transistor, so it's a pretty easy place to start. You can see we've got our electronic signal coming in here. This resistor, that's what that little rectangle is, uh, is there to limit the current that will flow through from the base to the emitter of the transistor because if you didn't have that resistor there, there'd be a lot of current flowing through the transistor and it might not be good for it, it might blow it up. Uh, so if you apply a signal in here, you've got that current flowing from the base to the emitter and then the transistor will connect the collector up the top to the emitter. So what we've done is connected the output signal down to ground. That's what the symbol is there, zero volts. Uh, we've got 5 volts up here, so when the signal is not on, when the collector is not connected to the emitter, uh, 5 volts is connected down to the output, so the output will be on. Uh, if you do apply a signal to the input, then the collector will be connected to the emitter, which is connected to 0 volts, and so the output will then thus be connected to 0 volts, and the output will be off. So, essentially, if you've got the input on for a NOT gate, then the output will be off. And if you've got the input off, then the output will be on. Honestly, if you want to know how the logic gates work, uh, I'd suggest looking elsewhere on the internet. There's lots of resources. This isn't the best place you can be learning this stuff. Anyway, this NOT gate is useful in the fact that we are now able to invert the signal 
that we've got coming into the gate. Uh, hence what's called a NOT gate because the output will not be what the input is. Here's a NOT gate that I prepared earlier uh, using the two resistors and one transistor. We've got an LED showing the output. Uh, and If we turn the switch on, this will turn our input to an ON signal. Then you'll notice that the output or the LED will turn off. And if we have our input off, then the output will remain on. So moving on to the OR gate, this one uses two transistors because we've got two inputs and as you might have guessed by the name, the output will be on if either one of the inputs is on. So input one OR, input two is on, then the output will also be on. So like last time, as you can see, uh, both inputs as they're connected to the base of each transistor, they've got a resistor there to stop too much current from flowing through the base. And if we have both inputs off initially, you can see that the 5 volts from the top of the circuit doesn't have anywhere to go. Both transistors are not connecting the collector to the emitter, and so the output is connected through this resistor to 0 volts, and the output will be off. Uh, if you turn the top input on, then we've got a connection between the collector and the emitter of this transistor. So 5 volts can go all the way through to the output and the output will be on. Same thing for this lower transistor. If we connect the collector and the emitter here, then 5 volts can go through and to the output. So the output will be on. If both are on, the same thing happens. Uh, the 5 volts can go through both transistors and the output will still be on. So the only case where the output will be off is if both inputs are off. So like last time, here is an OR gate with the output as an LED, and you'll notice these top two switches are our inputs. If we have one of them on, or both of them on, or just the other one on, the output will always stay on. The only case where it's not on is if we have both of the inputs off. So now we come to the AND gate, which again, as you might have guessed from the name of the gate, is if you've got both inputs on, input 1 and input 2, then the output will be on. So you can see from the circuit of this one, it's nice and easy to read. Uh, if both inputs are off initially, then there's no connection between the collector and emitter of each transistor. 5 volts has nowhere to go, and the output is connected through the resistor to 0 volts, and so it's off. Uh, if we turn on just one transistor, then we connect the collector and emitter of just that transistor, Still, 5 volts cannot quite reach it uh, to the output. What you need is both inputs, uh, so that the collector and the emitter of this transistor and the collector and the emitter of this transistor allow 5 volts to go all the way down and to the output and allow it to be on. So again, we've put together our AND gate on the breadboard. We've got the LED as the output, and switch 1 and 2 on this little dip switch are our inputs. And you'll notice if we just turn one of them on, that won't turn the LED on. If we turn, if I can get in there, and turn that second one on, didn't work very well. If we turn the second one on, turn three and four off, uh, you'll notice that it's also off, and it's only when we turn both input one and input two on that the LED will light up like that. So now we come to the exclusive OR gate, or the XOR gate. Uh, what this is, is uh, the output of this gate will be on if only one, but not both, of the inputs are on. So if we turn input 1 on, but not input 2, then the output will be on. If we turn input 2 on, but not input 1, then the output will be on as well. Uh, if the inputs are the same, whether they're both off or both on, then the output will be off. This turns out to be a really useful gate in maths functions and that kind of stuff. Uh, however, it is the most complicated that we'll see. If you have a look online for the circuit schematics of an XOR gate, you'll find a pretty big range of designs. Uh, most designs you'll see use probably like five or six transistors. This one that I've put together uh, uses only four, simply because using four transistors instead of five or something uh, in the amount of exclusive OR gates that we're actually going to be using in the total design, uh, saving on one transistor will save us 
a whole lot of transistors in the end. So I'll do my best to try to explain how the exclusive OR gate works with this schematic. Uh, if we just have a look at the two transistors on the left here, you can see it essentially makes up uh, what we saw before as an AND gate, because we've got the emitter of the first transistor connected to the collector of the second transistor. Uh, but instead of being a normal AND gate, what this is is an inverted AND gate, because we've got the resistor instead of being connected from the base, uh, I mean the emitter of the second transistor to zero volts, it's connected from the top, uh, the collector of the first transistor to five volts. Uh, what this will do is it's the opposite of what an AND gate does essentially. So the output will be on unless both inputs are on. So you can see if we turn input one on then the collector and the emitter of the first transistor will be connected so the 5 volts can go through this transistor but it's got nowhere to go after that so this output of the gate up here will be 5 volts or on. Uh, same thing if we just turn input 2 on and leave input 1 off uh, the 5 volts won't be able to go through this transistor because input 1 is off and so the output of the gate which is this wire here will remain on. Uh, if both inputs are off same thing happens 5 volts has nowhere to go the output is on if both inputs are on, however, then both transistors connect their collectors and emitters and the 5 volts can go straight through there. Or actually, the 0 volts down the bottom here is connected up to the output. Then the output will be off. Anyway, the output of the inverted AND gate goes on to power the next two transistors on the right here. Uh, what these are is the same as the OR gate that we saw before. So we've got input 1 connected to the base of the first transistor, input 2 connected to the base of the second transistor. Uh, if both of these inputs are not on, so the output of this will power the OR gate, but at least one of these inputs has to be on for the OR gate to connect the 5 volts through to the output. So what we've got uh, essentially in the whole thing is if both of the inputs are not on then the first stage of the circuit will work and if at least one of the inputs are on then the second stage of the circuit will work. So what this is is if one but not both of the inputs are on then the output will be on which is our exclusive OR gate that we want. So this is not a very nice circuit to put together on a breadboard but I've got it here to show you. Uh, if we turn both the inputs off like we've got now you'll notice that the output is off and if we turn just the first one on the output will turn on. Uh, if we turn both of them on however you'll notice that the output is off which is what we want and finally if we just leave the second input on then the output will be on as well. So this should work perfectly as an exclusive OR gate in the next stages of the process in building our full computer processor. In future videos we will chain multiple logic gates together in order to perform more complex computer logic and stuff but for now what I want to do is put these circuits on something a bit more permanent something like uh, what we've got over here is I don't know what this is called it's like is it perf board or something? Anyway, we'll solder it on. I'll go grab my soldering iron. That's back up on the desk where I do all my chemistry. So I'll see you in a bit. Well, that took a lot longer than I thought. Uh, my soldering iron, that bloody tip, it's just completely worn away. I need to get a new one, I think. It's very tricky trying to solder all these tiny little joins. So we've got our knot gate working very well. We've got our OR gate, turn that on, see, uh, the AND gate up here, so we've got both switches on, then the LED will turn on, and our XOR gate, this was the one that was the hardest to put together because it's the biggest uh, and it does work. So if we've just got the single switch on, then it goes on, if we've got both switches on, and it goes off and if we've just got the second switch on it'll be on. So 
working very well. Not that these are useful in any way, really. I mean, we're definitely not going to be using this kind of copper soldering board to actually build the full processor that would just take way, way too long to solder everything on and connect all the wires. Probably make our own PCBs or maybe just order some PCBs online. In future videos, we'll pretty quickly scale up. We'll start with some memory stuff, latches, matrixes, uh, multiplexes, and so on. Uh, but until then, see you later.